Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Seminole Sideline 365. I am giving you a quick update as something has uh, been on my mind for a little while. Uh, well, I, if you've been following the channel, you've seen the episodes covering uh, Florida State basketball. And I know it's something that a lot of people don't want to cover with a spring game coming up. And that's taking a lot of, a lot of people's attention. And we will be having our, our spring game special uh, this Thursday night on April 13th. So be sure to uh, see us live for that show as we are excited about that. But uh, while all this is going on, uh, yes, you may have heard if you do fall fantasy basketball at all, things are free falling at the moment. Uh, the, with the, especially with the announcement that Matthew Cleveland decided to answer the transfer portal. This falls on the back of Caleb Mills also putting his name into the portal a couple of weeks ago. And all the dominoes are starting to put, uh, are, are starting to fall in line to, in line now. This this is something that we we've talked about now over the course of a couple of weeks. If you missed our previous shows, go back and look through them in our archive. We did a live show uh, three weeks ago, I think it was, where we discussed: Is it time for? Well, we started this conversation months ago. Was it time for Florida State to move on from Coach Leonard Hamilton? Once again, once again, this is no disrespect to the man and what he built here, but we we discussed it, and, and there has been four to five years of negative production and negative growth within the program, all concluding in what we had last season, which was a nine nine win regular season, um, and the disaster it was. You can say well, there's injuries, there's da da da, but even he admitted that he did not approach he has not approached things the right way in the in the emergence of nil transfer portal everything that it is. And now we're finally seeing players, A, not being developed. Not you know, There's not going to be a purge of players now going to the NBA draft this season. It just, it's not going to happen. But you're seeing now players leaving to go to other programs. That wasn't something that was happening the last couple of years. Last couple of years, the thing that you had to be worried about was guys going to the NBA because you had got, you wanted done guys. You don't have that right now because A, you don't have that dearth of talent right now on your team first of all and second of all players don't think they can develop right now or players don't see the vision anymore on this team and i don't blame them once again we, we highlight all the reasons we we've, we've seen the negative strides this this program has taken over the course of the last three or four years or basically since the COVID year and, and, and the negative growth and development and since leonard hamilton lost dennis gates and his key assistants there has been kind of a, a regression in what we used to have here. And, and, and maybe some of it has been that when he got those one and done guys, it kind of did, he couldn't adjust to it. He, he, when, when you had, you know, the, uh, you know, uh, the, uh, the Isaacs come into the program and he only had them for a single season. He couldn't get those, those senior guys to stay in the program. Like he, he had in the older days where he built around those guys. Maybe that threw him off his game. And then when the NIL came, the transfer portal came, he obviously didn't adjust to it. And what you had last season was a culmination of where you signed, you had six scholarship players signed. In the addition of just two portal players, you had a massive class last season. And I, I don't know if many people realize that, is that you had a massive signing class last year, a massive one. And, and, and we could take a look at this just real quick and I'll pull it up. But I think that also led into their struggles because this is a massive class that you brought in last year. In a, a class that didn't give you the production you needed to happen. Bob and Miller, we all know what happened there. The suspension through basically half the season, more than half the season, I think it was. He played with 15 games, and when he came back, he he just didn't give you anything. I mean, season was over by then, but also when he came back, he just wasn't the monster that you thought he was going to be. And you could blame it on the layoff, whatever it is. He, We don't know. He may transfer out, right? He may decide, hey, I'm not going to do this anymore. I'm going to playing Europe, go play somewhere else. But we don't know his status right now. With On the back of the Matthew Cleveland news, I wouldn't be surprised if someone like him goes and explore things, uh, whether it be in, in like a G League, whether it's a B overseas, maybe in another program itself. But we'll see what happens there. Um, Cameron Corn, he showed you some stuff. Uh, he, he probably played, was probably more one of your more productive guys uh, as a freshman, uh, along with Dante Green, those are two guys that showed you something, and they were two of your highest rated recruits, two of your top 100 uh, national players that you brought in. Um, but once again, these weren't 15 points per game scores. These were these were you know 
uh, nine nine point per game players, I believe they were. So you had you know uh, you had uh, Cameron Corn. He had eight points per game uh, along with twenty three minutes, and then you had uh, Dante Green uh, in limited time. He didn't start in any games last year for you, um, but he he averaged you know he had a couple of boards, uh, one or two points per game. So not a huge difference, but he played he played in almost you know three fourths of your game last year, or three fourths of your games last year. So going back to the class. So you had, you know, minor, uh, you know, some production from Cameron, not a lot of points production from Dante, but you, you got him in some games. Jeremiah was out all year last year, injuries. Chandler Jackson, injuries. Tom House, no production from him, played, no production from him, really. So then you have Darren Green, got 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 decent production from him, but once again, wasn't an all-star, you know, right? He he got got some points for you. He rather managed to be a three-point specialist. Um, but wasn't going to necessarily, and you knew this when you signed him, he wasn't going to line up. He, he was your second lane scorer for you, which was great, but it wasn't like some guy that could necessarily take over the game for you. Um, but he did shoot 36% from the three point land, which is you know, kind of what you brought him in, in to do. So he did his job. So you can't hate on him for that. Um, Jalen Ganey was supposed to be your defensive specialist coming from Brown got hurt once again. So there were entries on this team like we talked about, but also it's not like you had a star freshman that you wanted that you were going to bring in from this high school class that could come in and make, be an instant impact guy. None of those freshmen that you brought in were instant impact brought, brought something that you couldn't get from the transfer portal or better. And that's where they made a mistake with this team. In my opinion, is that you brought in, you signed six high schoolers, six high schoolers. That's a massive, massive signing class in the day and age of the transfer portal. When you think about it, six high schoolers came in, on scholarship and the best one on your team points wise was Cameron Corn with eight points per game. It, it, now I think that is what Leonard Hamilton acknowledges that he, he kind of dropped the ball. I think that's where he admits where he dropped the ball when only one of your freshmen breaks basically the three point barrier in points per game of all those six freshmen, you have an issue. That's why you're not winning games. It's because you invested so much in your high school pipeline and only one of them breaks three points per game all year. When four of them were eligible to play time, you know, we count out all the injuries, but four of those guys were eligible to play for most of the season. You're going to run into issues. And then the two bets you made in the transfer portal, one of them paid off. One of them paid off with Darren Green. He did his job. He came in, made an impact. But then the other, uh, uh, Gainey got hurt, but he was only supposed to be a defensive specialist. You didn't expect him to light it up. So he was he was supposed to play a role in this team as your defensive guy. He got hurt. You lost that defensive specialist. So you're, so both of his bets did not pay off. Deep high school recruiting class didn't pay off yet last season. Maybe it will this season. Transfer portal, one, one bet paid off, one didn't. But you risked too much by not going through the portal. And then this season, you can't really go to the portal, right? Because you have so many scholarships tied up in young guys. And that's where we get to today. You look at your depth start. You're losing Caleb Mills, who was your third leading scorer from this past season. This is this was a depth chart last, but this is your projected depth chart or the depth chart from this past season. So don't look at the numbers here. But you'd lose your starting point guard. He's gone. He was your third leading scorer. He's gone to Memphis. So big time program picked him up and I saw some FSU sites and guys comments on FSU sites, like good riddance. Why are you saying good riddance? This was your third lean score on the team. Your starting point guard on it on a very bad team. So I, I don't say, see why people say good riddance. You lose Caleb Mills. You lose Matthew Cleveland, who was by, by and large your, your leader on this team and was a surprise when he entered his name into the portal. This you could say Caleb, Caleb Mills, okay, he's he's leaving. He he's transferred a couple of times, I believe. So you could see that maybe happening. Matt, Matthew Cleveland leaving the program, leader on this team. That that's where you start to get concerned. Why did he enter his name? Why? Because it, obviously he's not really fighting for anybody for his spot at all. Why is he giving up on the program? Why doesn't he see? Does he see what I see? That there is no clear vision or the vision for rebuilding back this program. Does he see that they 
that Leonard Hamilton and the, and the staff are not able to pull high impact players from the portal anymore. Is, is that, is he seeing what m- me and maybe a few other fans are seeing right now is that the athletic department does not seem to be, or, or the boosters and, and, and the collectives aren't investing the time and energy that they are in the football program. They're, they're not doing the same thing as they are in the basketball program. Is, is that what Cleveland saw? And he's like, well, why am I going to waste my time at Florida state? I'm a good player. I, I'm a above average, may, close to maybe elite player. Let me go to a program, a, a top 15 pro. He's gonna, he's getting top 15 interest, top 15 program interest. Why don't I go to a program and, and make the tournament this year instead of trying to work out, work with one that's still trying to figure out this NIL landscape for basketball, trying to figure out how to use the portal. Because Florida State does not have a lot of scholarships available, whether it be for transfers or, or signing class. I mean, they signed one guy in this high school recruiting class because they didn't have the scholarships available because they just signed six guys and brought in two from the transfer portal with multiple, multiple years. So they don't have a lot of whip room. Now they do now but because you just lost two guys to the portal. But losing a guy like Kale Mills in Cleveland doesn't help you because now you have to go replace two high-impact guys in the portal with two more high-impact guys in the portal, which you haven't successfully done in two years. So – and you've had no significant staff changes. So I think if you're a Florida State fan, you have to say, what is the what is what is the AD doing right now? What are his discussions with the basketball with Leonard Hamilton, this program? What what are they doing behind the scenes? Because unless they have, unless, unless you have a lot, a lot, a lot of faith in that you're gonna keep all those high school guys together, you're gonna keep Baba Miller, you're gonna keep uh, you know. You're going to keep Cameron Fletcher here. You're going to keep Chandler Jackson. You're going to, you're going to keep Dante Green. You're going to keep all Cameron uh, Camp Corn. You're going to keep all these guys. None of those guys are going to answer their names either. But if you think that though the potential of those guys to develop one more year and be great is high, that that's got to be their bet right now. That they that they invest a lot in those signing those guys and it's going to pay off this next year when they're healthy. Everyone's healthy together. That's got to be their bet. That's what Thunder Hamilton has to be selling to the AD right now is that I put all my eggs in that basket, that six scholarship high school signing class. And then I'm going to get Darren Green back for another year. I'm going to get my guy Ganey back for another year. Once he's healthy here, he'll be my defensive specialist and we'll go at it with these guys, this group. Cause there's, you know, that could have been what the vision he sold to the AD, but now losing your top two, two of your top three, players on this team makes that vision even harder to implement because now you have to go find two more impact players in the portal right now. And I do not believe Lemon Hamilton and this staff can get that done anymore because you are coming off a nine wins season season before that. Once again, non NCAA tournament team. And before that, uh, you know, three straight years to decline. And that's what concerns me is that I do not believe they have this, the, the poll that they had, three, four years ago. Because this brand does not sell in basketball like it does in football, even when it's down. They don't have that pull, especially in the portal now, especially when they weren't playing the portal like they should have been. But let me know your thoughts. How do you replace a Matthew Cleveland and a Caleb Mills? Do you, do you, do you think this staff has the power to go sign these guys? Can they get the Loach's brother from VCU? Can they get these high tier available players in the transfer portal that are there now? Because I can tell you, Florida State's already behind. Syracuse is signing guys. Georgia Tech with uh, with Stalemeyer is signing guys with their new coach. And that's the biggest thing is that getting a new, if Florida State had gone out and said, hey, Leonard, it was great. Let's gracefully retire and bring some young blood into the system or new blood into the system. I don't care if it's old or new, whatever a new coach in this program, you inject some momentum back into this program and you could have maybe kept those guys, maybe lost them, but inject some momentum back into this program and attacked the portal hard. But they're sticking and other programs are getting that momentum. Damon Stoudemire, Georgia Tech signed two guys, one four-star, and look where we are. No momentum on the trail, no momentum in the portal. We are where we are. Very limited, very limited scholarships. 
two top scorers gone and at the bottom of the ACC. Where do we go from here? Let me know your thoughts. I want to know, do you think that this can be rebuilt built back? What would be your next steps? And where do we go from here? Like I said, check us out Thursday night, April 13th. We'll do our spring preview show for the football teams. I'm excited for that. Excited for Saturday. And uh, we'll take it from there. But let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.